Lawrence Technological University welcomes you to Blue Devil Stadium. Today, the Blue Devils host the Indiana Wesleyan University Wildcats. LTU is a proud member of the National Association of Intercollegiate Athletics. The association and its members excel in developing student athletes to fulfill their personal and professional potential. The NAIA boasts more than 250 member institutions and 65,000 competing student athletes with more than 21 conferences. Visit NAIA.org for more information. The Blue Devils are competing in their fourth season as full members of the Mid State Football Association.
because every athlete deserves to be treated like a pro. Henry Ford Sports Medicine. Talking about finances can be confusing, difficult, scary, murky even. But it doesn't have to be with Money Mentor by Michigan First Credit Union on your side. More than 90 years ago, Michigan First was founded on the principle of putting education first. Today, Money Mentor continues that tradition because affording the lifestyle you want isn't always easy. Check us out at michiganfirstmoneymentor.com or follow us on social media for tips, tricks, blogs, and videos today. finances can be confusing, difficult, scary. We can't hear anything. We welcome to Lawrence Tech and welcome to the biggest challenge of the season for the Blue Devils. They're back home on a perfect October afternoon for football, but this is quite the test. One of the best teams in the country, the number five Indiana Wesleyan Wildcats in town on an afternoon that we shall see how it goes for LTU. Evan Stockton, Richie Pop, glad you're making a little time for us on a busy college football Saturday across the country. Richie, obviously in your coaching experience, you've had teams taking on other teams that come in with a lot of hype and a lot of talent. So from LTU's perspective today, how do you counter what Indiana Wesleyan's going to bring you? How do you try to spring an upset? Well, absolutely got to get some turnovers on the defensive side of the ball, and they have to be turnovers in their territory so you've got that opportunity to quick score. Number one, you build yourself up. Number two, you, an extra possession. Anytime you can get that helps, but in particular when you're playing a top five team in the country. And then you've got to make sure and take care of the ball on the other side. Hey, we can punt, but we cannot turn the ball over. We have to do that. Never talk about a perfect game. But boy, oh boy, they got to play an excellent one today to upset a number five team. Lawrence Tech feeling good after a win at Madonna last week, 38 to 10. They scored the final 31 of the ball game. Indiana Wesleyan in the midst of a heck of a year. We'll get to that throughout the broadcast. But before we get there, we got to go down to the sidelines, and the third member of our crew, Elizabeth Coons, is standing by. You're good. You're on list. Hey guys, I'm Elizabeth Kuhn here at Blue Devil Stadium. Lawrence Tech taking on Indiana Wesleyan today. I talked to Coach Mitchell earlier this week. He said they need to be successful in three areas of the game today. He said that they need to win the turnover battle. He said Indiana Wesleyan is really good at taking care of the ball. He said we need to do that too and force some turnovers on them. He also said we need to win the ground attack. He said we have to have successful run game today. And he also said that they need to limit their explosive plays. Indiana Wesleyan is a really explosive team. He said they just need to limit with that. Indiana Wesleyan coming off of a really big win last week. They beat Marion, which bumped them up to number five in the NAIA rankings. It's the first time they've done that in program history. Lawrence Tech also coming off a big win. They had a bye week last week, but they beat Madonna the week before. So we've got a great matchup here today. Make sure you guys stick with us. Guys, back to you. Elizabeth, we appreciate it. Richie, you just heard Elizabeth talk okay. about the explosive right. offense yeah. for Indiana times. Wesleyan. Okay. They are explosive okay, yeah, yeah. in their efficiency. Okay, cool. Their quarterback, Xander Stokes, has thrown for nine touchdowns, zero interceptions this year. And they got a really good balanced attack of Weems and Williams at the running back spot. I suppose this is an obvious question to ask. Why is it tough to stop an offense that is well balanced like Indiana Wesleyan is? Well, you're over there, and they're, they're a pick of the litter. Are we going to run? Are we going to pass? And and been talking to their quarterback coach earlier, he says, you know, we find ways to win games, and sometimes that means we do things that might be unorthodox. When we're supposed to throw, we can run because we are balanced. And when we're supposed to run, we can quick, quickly get the ball out. So when you have the balanced attack on defense, it's difficult to call that defense because the tendency is, and let's listen, they're, they're only 200 yards apart in passing and running. You can't be much more balanced. So on defense, when you want that blitz down, 
man, you got to question yourself. Should it be now? Is it a run blitz versus a pass blitz? And I think that's what's made them so proficient, as you mentioned. You're getting a look at Tyler Kalka, the starting quarterback for Lawrence Tech, who's out of a bit of a heater right now. Threw for three touchdowns at Madonna last week. He's thrown for at least two touchdowns in every game this year. Thrown for over 1,400 yards, 15 touchdowns, and just one pick this year. Hey, you wouldn't blame Tyler Richie if he didn't have a little pressure on his shoulders, though. He knows, trying to bring an upset, spring an upset. QB's got to play well. He probably has to play well today. Absolutely. I, I learned the other day and heard for the first time, pressure is a privilege. Because if you've got some pressure on you, that means there are some high expectations, which you've set yourself up to be in. And Tyler's a kid who absolutely takes and owns that. I love that about him. All right, here we go. Number five team in town. Ethan Collins going to kick it deep for IWU. As Lawrence Tech about to try to run it back. Off we go on a Saturday in the middle of October. Third Saturday in October. Chance for a return for Frank Black, and he's not going anywhere. He stopped right around the 15. You know, we always talk about offense, defense, balance, this, that. You know, they're only giving up 15 points a game. The third facet, and they're very well schooled in that special teams. When you can stop a team inside the 25, which where you get a fair catch, as they did, man, it's absolutely touch your defense in a great place. They're on the 15-yard line, long way to go. Let's get the offense clicking. So Indiana Wesleyan with that really good special teams play backs up Lawrence Tech. They are starting inside the 20 here. We'll keep an eye on all day the running backs that Lawrence Tech uses. They've used four different guys this year. Sanders and Davidson start with Kolka in the backfield here. First give of the game to Davidson. Plowing ahead, trying the right side, gaining a couple on first down. Kind of another obvious aspect to an upset, Richie, when you are playing a good team, a balanced team like Indiana Wesleyan. Got to hang on to that football. I suppose the issue is, though, Lawrence Tech on the year, they run it at about 125 yards per game. They throw for nearly 300 per game. They're going to have to go against their strength today, potentially, to pull off this win. Absolutely. You want to limit the number of possessions, and you do that in the run game and play in strong D, and that's what they're going to hope for against their norm, but that's what you got to have. First throw of the game for Kolka, wading away from pressure. Running right, brought down from behind. Turns what could have been a negative play into positive and sets up third down short. And you make, make a great point right there. You know, as, as a coach, as a player, you want positive, positive, positive. Uh, it's, it's like the 78-year-old golfer who just keeps hitting it straight right. in his power bogey the whole day, <laughs> and you're trying to whap that thing. Anyway, two really positive plays. Sets them up third and two for a manageable situation. Pick up this first down, and you're on a roll. Hey, playing from those forward tees doesn't help either, you know what I mean? <laughs> Good point. Third down short, Kolka wants to throw, swinging it out right side for a first down. It's C.J. Davidson down the sidelines, and Lawrence Tech keeps their first drive going. Great job opening up. First downs is what you want to get. You start in the 15. Everyone would like to have the 85-yard drive. Stack some first downs, pin them deep, but keep that offense on the sideline, and you're doing a great job for your defense. Coming up on a couple of minutes in, still Lawrence Tech football. First down 10 right around the 40. Davidson up the middle, good chunk gain, C.J. Davidson. The man still running inside the 40. Well, I'll tell you what, some really good O-line play right there. That was a drive, a truck through hole, and man, did he expose it with a great burst up the middle. Great job, great play. Big first down run by CJ, and a great job by the big fellas in particular, uh, John McKelvin on that one. Nice job. Yeah, it's interesting, Richie. You bring up the left side of the line because that's where Lawrence Tech has shuffled things around. Number 56, John McKelvain started the year at center. Now he's your left guard. And Reese Perry is now the starter at left tackle. He began the year as the backup. Kolka with time, caught C.J. Thompson. 
What a start for Lawrence Tech. One drive and three first downs. Well, I'll tell you what I really like, you know, the short pass game is very much a run game. You get the ball out quickly. It's not forcing it downfield. They brought off edge pressure right there. Nice job picking it up. As you mentioned, the left side, we kick out the left tackle. He picks that up. Short gain, big tight end in the middle. Great drive going. Way to open the game. Approach to the red zone on drive number one of the ball game. Kolka fields the snap. Gives to Keon Sanders. And this one not going to work quite as well. Maybe gained a yard. Great defensive pressure right there. Gap experience and sound play right there. Coming off of a block, scraping off. A little bit of a loss on that play. That's where you talk about those positive plays. Just even one, two yards, something positive. Got to get that now here on second down and 10. Opening drive of the ball game. Lawrence Tech already three first downs. Hoping for a touchdown and an early statement against the fifth ranked team in the country. Kolka. Given time, deep shot, right side, it's picked. Donovan Shelton with the interception. Rembert the intended target. Donovan Shelton with one heck of a play. A little bit late on that throw. I, I know he's reading the corner. I know he's been taught all week that corner's going to sit when that speed out. Number two comes to him. Just waited a little bit too long. We talk about trusting that process, trusting the coaches. That said... Lawrence Tech offense has to feel good about how they played on that first drive. And you've pinned them starting on their 10 yard line. Let's get a three and out and get some good field position here. That's just the second pick of the season for Kalka and a rare mental mistake. Xander Stokes, the starting quarterback for IWU, throwing on the first play of the game and he's got it caught. To set up a second down and shorter for the Wildcats. Again, uh, talking to their quarterbacks coach, he said, you know, having him have that experience, you know, a rough first year was the COVID year, a little rough, a lot of learning, but boy, is it paid off now because he's a heck of a leader, has great poise, and has firm command of the offense, and that's what's demonstrated in their number five ranking. Number 16 in white and red, Xander Stokes. Nine touchdowns, zero interceptions this year. On the ground here with Daniel Weems. Lunge and ahead, and they'll give him the first down. This is something you're going to see with, uh, with Wesley and the Wildcats. Balance, balance, balance. You look at the end of the half, and there's a difference of maybe three more passes or three more runs. There it is demonstrated. One pass, one run, first down. That's what they'd like to stack up. On the air, they're running for about 140 yards per game and passing for about 190. Scoring 31 points per game, that's more than enough help for a really good defense. Stokes, deep shot, down the middle, incomplete. Wanted Gordon. This is the kind of shot plays you have to take to say, hey, everyone, you know what? I, I know it's windy. I know it's this. I know it's that. But we're not going to be afraid to throw the ball down the field. I'm going to get protection with my own line. And unless you're blitzing us, we're going to be fine. And that's what he demonstrated right there. Be very, very surprised if this was not a rundown. Stokes has thrown it a couple of times, run it once. Indiana Wesleyan off that red zone interception on their first drive of the game. Here's the run. Weems running right. Good gainer, good stiff arm. And it's a first down for the Wildcats. You mentioned earlier, you know, even though it's second and 10 and long yardage, you know, number one, you want some positivity on that second down. Obviously great positivity there, but it's one of those things you want to stay with this, your scheme. You mentioned they're scoring 31. They're only giving up 15 points a game. You're going to win a lot of football games if the other team's only getting a couple of touchdowns. So, again, very, very sound, and uh, there's two passes, two runs. Stokes looking right, throwing high and incomplete. Wanted Weems. We mentioned earlier, too, about, you know, 
throw it when they don't think you're going to throw it and run it when they don't think you're going to run it. And, there's, and they're demonstrating a couple of first down throws. A lot of times, you know, teams are get that run, get that feel. Uh, opposite maybe of tendency sometimes. And then, okay, we didn't get that, so let's stack a run on it. We'll see what we have here. Frankly, speaks to Indiana Wesleyan's confidence as well. Hey, we can run it any down and probably gain five, six yards a pop. Absolutely. There's a little popcorn pass to Jaquez Carter. Running left with a lot of room. Carter tiptoe on the sidelines. Staying in bounds and ripped down inside the 20. Man, what a nice little play. And technically a pass because he does push it forward, but absolutely a run scheme right there. Get that jet action going. Got the edge and did a great job getting down the sideline. Uh, nice job, McKenzie uh, Alibra making that touchdown save and tackle there. So now Indiana Wesleyan enters the red zone on their first drive. Lawrence Tech got to the red zone on their first drive and threw an interception. To Darian Williams, the deep back, with Stokes going under center. Play action. Roll right. Now looking back left. There is a wide open man. Touchdown, Charlie Hill. Boy, I'll tell you what, what a great scheme. He, scheme. he is going to shuffle, shuffle right like everything's going to be blocked to the right, and then he just releases. He gets lost in the mix. Nice job to find him out there. What a nice play by Wesleyan right there. Tough play to defend. Got to have your eye discipline, though, on defense. You know, Charlie Hill is really efficient when he catches the football. He has five catches this year and now three touchdowns. That, combined with Mr. Stokes and his efficiency of touchdown to zero interceptions, yeah. bodes well. That's the type of math a football coach likes. Oh, you fall in love with that stuff. Ethan Collins on for the extra point, right down the pipe. So Indiana Wesleyan, number five team in the country, going on the road after a big win at Marion last week. Ben, but don't break on defensive drive number one and on offensive drive number one right down the field for seven. Absolutely what they expect to do and absolutely what Lawrence Tech needed to not happen. You can't turn the ball over and then you've got to cause turnovers and what happens is you get a couple of big plays against you, one of the jet sweep and then one you lose the opposite side tight end and bing, bang, boom, it's a seven nothing game. Richie, are you making any adjustments offensively for Lawrence Tech? Or are you sticking with what was working on that first drive of the ball game? Well, I was very impressed with how they stacked the short passing game, good running game, the old line making some really good holes. Again, it was simply uh, got to throw the ball a little bit earlier. He had the hole shot. He was just a little bit late on it. Safety comes over, left it a little inside as well. t check quarterback, keep that guy to the sideline. You could see him turn in which could be dangerous because safeties are great athletes and he made the interception. So I'm sticking with what we've got. Let's get a good return here to start it off. A little better for field position than 15 though, and that'd be helpful as well. Ethan Collins, who kicks and punts for Indiana Wesleyan. This kick, returnable for the Blue Devils. Coming out across the 20. And once again, the special teams unit for the Wildcats does a nice job getting to the ball. It's going to be first down 10 for LTU at the 25. And you know, I, I think sometimes people think, oh, you know, it's only 10 yards further than the other one. But that's a whole first down that your offense does not have to get. And that's a big difference. So instead of seven or eight, now you're down to maybe six or seven or less. You get a big play in there. Could be three or four, but it gets you to that touchdown. Let's see what they're going to stack up here on offense. Really like the play calling on that first drive. So Colt goes back on the field. It was a great first drive until he threw an interception. Just his second of the year. Donovan Shelton with excellent defense as Kolka was looking for Rembert near the goal line. Flag holds the play. Delay game. Got to keep an eye on that top clock. Got to keep an eye on that clock. Hard to miss the play clocks here at Lawrence Tech, right smack dab in the middle of a quarterback's vision. I agree, right off the goal post. It's what any NFL quarterback says when they get to the stadium, the first thing they look for, where's the play clock? Where's that 40-second thing? Come on now. 
Throw to Kendall Williams, who's in the midst of a heck of a year for Lawrence Tech. He took a late hit. And Shelton, who just had the pick, just got caught with a late hit. Again, love the play. Great edge blocking by the receivers. Almost always when there's a big play downfield, we saw it in the Jet play with the Wildcats. We're seeing it right here with the, the Blue Devils. Bang. Good outside edge blocking, big play, and then he hits him out of bounds, stack 15 on it, first down. So back to my point about the first down yardage that they gain in the return, this is like two free first downs now. Man, when you're in a big game, they're just absolutely coveted. We'll take every one they'll give us. When you're playing number five team in the country, yeah, you'll take all the Absolutely. help you can get. Absolutely, great point. Coming up on halfway into the first quarter, drive number two of the game for Lawrence Tech. Davidson again, a lot of room again. C.J. Davidson is starting to rack up the rushing yards in the first quarter. Well, that time Griffin Peacock and uh, Bronson Surfa came around and did a really nice job. That hole is just magnanimous. I cannot believe it. But then he burst through it. Instead of hitting it slow, he just gets it going. Love to see that. And again, great drive going. Need to finish with some points here, preferably a touchdown, of course. Lawrence Tag right back on the move. Kalka to throw. Looking down the middle, incomplete. Jalen Wallace juggled it about three different times. Absolutely, and fortunately, as there were several defenders there, we did not have them catch it. So that was excellent for us, and a good ball. Got to make that catch, got to keep focused. The sun shines on the field, a welcome sight on a 50 degree day. What a beautiful day. Man, really? what a great football fall day. I mean, the uh, the leaves are in perfect condition this time of October. It's Absolutely. The oranges and reds, love it. I'm a sucker for some good fall leaves. How can you not be? Davidson again. CJ spinning away. You talk about a second and third effort. They couldn't even bring him down on that run. And I'll tell you what, Coach Mitchell has got to love what he is seeing with his old line. You have to run the ball. It limits their possessions. They're doing a phenomenal job of it right now, and they got to keep that going. But again, third and manageable is what you set up. That's all you can ask for. Line to gain's the 22. They're at the 25, so it's just third down and three. Alka stepping up, throwing down the middle. It's caught. It's Jalen Wallace just shy of the goal line. Blue Devils knocking on the door. So you talk about focus, and that becomes what you call an off-schedule play. Tyler Rees, he's got to get up in the pocket. He is absolutely running for the first down. But instead, his receiver says, hope scramble drill. I'm short. i got to start getting up the field. Tyler sees him breaking away. First to go on the one-yard line. Let's punch this one in. They'll bring in the heavy luck. Justin Cantu is on the left of Tyler Kalka. This looks a bit like a rugby scrum. Absolutely. I think they call it the battleship. And oh, my goodness, a high snap. And Rembert falls on the ball. A complete disaster. You know, we talked about earlier, as we were talking to Coach Mitchell, and you and I have discussed, you know, they get going, they get going, they get going and they shoot themselves in the foot. It's kind of been the theme in the games that, that they've not had great production, and, and that's a good example of it right there. And it's I know it's tough as a center, I'm telling you, but they tried that Kansas City Chief play, or you know, all the, a lot of people making this call, that call, snap it to a back, it just backfired on them. Hey, that said, second and goal, let's get a good positive play here, see if we can't get close enough, put something in the end zone. And now before the play, you get a timeout by Lawrence Tech. Maybe figuring they need a quick mental breather after going from first and goal at the one uh, the play to second and two uh, past the 20. Yeah, Playcock was uh, at, at three 
and Tyler was trying to get a motion call. Coach said, no, 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 we're not trying to rush this one. We're, we're close enough. We need some positive points here. Good timeout. You know, Richie, you and I, we're doing our third different Lawrence Tech home football game this year. And in the games that we have broadcast, right, it's what you were just, the, the, the refrain you were just singing. Lawrence Tech is in these ball games, but it's little opportunities here, little plays there that are, are shooting them in the foot. How, how do you get over that? How do you coach the team to get over those kinds of things? Well, and you, you talk about finishing. You know, finishing for a long time has been a, a mental set about finish, finish, finish drives, you know, and in any sport and you know anything in life really so you need to finish. And I think you have to work on that. Get the ball on the one and make that make that play as a competitive edge uh, kind of situation that and I know they go over those things. They've got to put it together and finish. On the ground with Sanders. Keon Sanders lost the football. Lawrence Tech is watching the same movie they've watched all year at home, and they don't want to keep watching this movie. No, you think you'd buy a new ticket or go to a new theater, and I'm telling you, that's a tough one right there. Again, you're on the one-yard line after a phenomenal play and a little scramble drill, and now, bam, they're back with the ball on the five-yard line going the other way. First drive, you're down on the 10, 12-yard line and we throw a pick. Got to make sure and string these together and finish drives, especially when you're playing a great team. Yeah, I mean, you don't want to belabor the point. You don't want to bury the team, but the fact of the matter is you had first and goal at the one, a bad snap and a fumble. You twice today have been in the red zone and you've scored zero points. It's Weems trying the right side and got tripped up as he crossed the five. We'll push it and shove it at the end of the play. Excellent defensive interior play right there. Good job by the two inside tackles right there, making him stop his feet. Anytime you get a running back stopping their feet, got a chance to rally the ball, and you witnessed it right there. So second down, about nine for Indiana Wesleyan, who started their first drive in a similar spot on the field, went right down and scored a touchdown on a pass from Stokes to Hill. Throwing it out again in the hands of Carter. Got to get him down as quickly as possible. That is a shifty wide receiver. Absolutely. Down saw him out. run down the sideline earlier. Want to stop that. Again, they get themselves in a third and manage ball. And Lawrence Tech, hey, you force a punt right here. You're going to get some good field position, possibly even on your own side of the 50. We need to make a big play right here. This is one of those, you know, you brought up, hey, how do you coach? They're so balanced. Every, the whole playbook is open for them because they are balanced and they're proficient and they've got a poised leader so they're not afraid to throw the ball. Snap to Stokes. Xander wants to throw. Roll it away and throw it incomplete. Great job of the defense. Little pressure, get him off his spot, make him move a little bit. Excellent back end play. On the, on the defensive backside, nice job. Good job on there again. McKenzie, right where he needs to be, right in the hip pocket as that receiver again went for the scramble drill. Forced a punt. Let's get a good little return here. Kendall set us up in a good offensive position and finished a drive. Ethan Collins a busy man. He kicks and he does the punting for IWU. Fields the low snap and gets it away. Williams will let this bounce and roll out of bounds right around midfield. You know what? Tip your caps to the Lawrence Tech defense, right? The offense gets inside the red zone twice in this quarter. They were just on the one yard line and fumbled it away, couldn't score. But they have an outstanding response mentally. And this is a heck of a starting field position for LTU right at the 50. Absolutely. And, and there's two aspects you really love about what the defense did that they won first down making the running back chop his feet, rally the rock, and then they won third down. You win first and third down, your defense is gonna do well. And again, on display right there. You made the great point though, hey, another turnover, they could have folded and here goes a 95 yard drive instead. First down in the 50 for the offense. Kalka, middle screen got tipped as they tried to hit Sanders. 
A little bit too much pressure inside. They did have that defended pretty well, even on a catch. It may have actually been loss of yardage, so maybe not a bad thing. That's an incomplete right there. You see on defense as well, they're very, very disciplined. We talk about the proficiency on offense. Defense is the same. Again, you know, you're giving up 15 points. You're doing a lot of good things. Yeah, and Indiana Wesley, and this year, has only allowed 29 combined points in the last three games. Kolka facing pressure, and he steps into it. It's a sack for the Wildcats. The rush got home. Spencer Hathaway from Traverse City with the sack. All the way down to Indiana to play. You know what? You find a spot to play, you get on the field, and you make good things happen. Then you come home to play. I, I would bet a lot of money there are some people from Traverse City and the fans here to, in the stands here today. Spencer is a proud grad of St. Francis, which is such an awesome football program in Traverse City. I know this will shock you. Spencer's from Traverse City, and he grew up playing hockey. There you have it. I think that's a birthright if you grow up in Traverse City. You get a puck yes. when you're born. Third down and long. Kolka incomplete. Looking for Williams. Tough one. You would love to stack a couple of first downs together and get it back in that run zone for a chance to finish. Okay, flip the script on that. Let's pin them deep, get another stop, and make them punt. Can't dwell on what you didn't do. You got to go ahead and do what you got to do. So now the Blue Devils are trying to play field position here. Bryston head in the punter with Johnson and Carter, the returners for the Wildcats. Short kick off the side of his foot. And Lawrence Tack only just gained about 10 yards of field position. So you talk about turnovers being a big part of today, and then you also need to talk about special teams. Uh, what you'd like to see there is a nice high coverage type of punt. Get him inside the 20. Uh, there's a discussion of the flag on the field here. Right. I would not... You know, in watching that motion and block, this possibly is an illegal crack or a blindside block. I hope not. All right, so it's a legal yeah. motion. Shift. Yeah, yeah, legal shift. Yeah. So five yards, and basically Lawrence Tech just gained zero yards of field position. Tough to set up your defense on that one. Right. Tough to set your defense like that. And it's such a team game, and all three facets always have to be in sync. Number one, to win a game. But number two, when you're playing a, a, a talented team such as Wesley and Wildcats. So we've got to get a defensive stop here because now they're in excellent field position. Give to Weems. Daniel Weems for a couple. Indiana Wesley and really trying to run that rock, but Lawrence Tech's done a pretty nice job containing runs just in the middle of the field. Yes, they have. They got that one edge rush. Uh, again, it was technically a pass, but it's a jet sweep run type uh, philosophy on it. But they have been very staunch in the middle. They need to keep that up. Going a little odd front here. Assuming a pass coming. Here is that pass, pressure gets home. It's Tommy Lappin, his first sack of the season. Boy, great job right there, great call. Weems on that one as the running back. He's got to just forget the fake as he notices that blitz coming in. He keeps running on it. Great play by the defense, excellent call. That's why they went to that odd front. You can get pressure from different areas. You got really three guys you can bring pressure from. That one was smack dab up the middle. I tell you what, I don't know if you could hear that call, but what an outstanding call, am I right? Phenomenal. Really well Great done. Energy. All right, here's Stokes down the middle. Incomplete. Well, that is two drives in a row. The defense has really stood up tall, done a great job staying with what their scheme is. Big sack, loss of yardage. Instead of hanging our heads, they came out flying around, 
one of the most impressive parts about LTU, even in the games where they've not been productive or done well, they keep on playing real hard, and that's a testimony to the family they're building here. Poor Levi Tidwell on that last play had the worst thing for a wide receiver. He was wide open, too much time to think about. Absolutely, toughest catch to make. Kendall Williams on the return. Literally got tripped up. 100% I was waiting for the flag to get thrown in the trip. That was the most obvious trip I've ever seen. Absolutely. I'm not quite sure how they missed that one. Again, you just call a spade a spade. He tripped him. That's illegal. Yeah, that's it. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> Stuck the leg out, and that's how he got tackled. That's illegal. I would never want to be an official. No. Because every parent, every coach, and I guess every broadcaster is trying to find a way to complain. <laughs> and we're really good at it. And we, all, yeah. all, all of us. Oh, we're good at it, Richie. <laughs> oh, we're good at it. Give to C.J. Davidson. Once again, slipping the initial hit, and then a sandwich, a Wildcat sandwich came to get him. That will probably be the final play of the first quarter. All told, I think Lawrence Tech will take what the score is, 7-0 after 15 minutes against the number five team in the country, and it's your football when you come on back to Lawrence Tech after one quarter. Indiana Wesleyan up 7-0, but it's Lawrence Tech football on the LTU Sports Network. Because every athlete deserves to be treated like a pro. Henry Ford Sports Medicine. Talking about finances can be confusing, difficult, scary, murky even. But it doesn't have to be with Money Mentor by Michigan First Credit Union on your side. More than 90 years ago, Michigan First was founded on the principle of putting education first. Today, Money Mentor continues that tradition because affording the lifestyle you want isn't always easy. Check us out at michiganfirstmoneymentor.com or follow us on social media for tips, tricks, blogs, and videos today. All right, we're back at Lawrence Tech in a football game that is still very much in doubt. 15 minutes into the football game, it's Lawrence Tech's football just across the 20. They're down seven nothing against the number five team in the country. But all told, Richie Pop, there's a lot of things that Lawrence Tech can be happy about in that first quarter. Well, you turn the ball over twice and your defense stands up proud as they did. That is phenomenal. Let's get a drive together here and tie this ball game up. Second down, Kalka throwing. It's caught and then a great open field tackle made. James Cartwright made the catch, and then he did what you never want to do. He went backwards. Well, you teach your receivers, spin to the outside. There's so many people coming from the inside. Just stay outside where, where there's one guy. And he loses the first down and gets tackled on a good play. That said, hey, it's third and short. Let's pick this thing up. They give him a very generous forward progress. It is third down and about one here. Again, we'll take it. Yeah. Like we said to the officials a few minutes ago, great job, well done. Absolutely. Play action to Sanders, tipped, picked. It's the second interception of the day for Donovan Shelton on a ball that was in the wide receiver's mitts. Oh, so frustrating on that one. Absolutely hit some big play possibility on that. Great ball, great protection. Love the play action. You got one-on-one -on -one with Arguably your, your most athletic receiver, tips and overthrows are always a trouble in football. So now Tyler Kalka, who entered today with one interception on the season, has two today. But again, frankly, that ball was in the right spot and tip balls turn in disaster. They usually do. Let's hope again our defense stands tall. Ball way inside LTU territory. Quick hitter. Caught Stevens Peppers. 
And again, LTU, a nice job limiting the damage potentially on the play. Ryan Ramsey with the tackle. Excellent job coming up there. That's a prolific hawk tackle right there. It's not about monster hits. It's about bring him down to the ground, hold him to two yards, which could have been an explosive play. In that first quarter, Xander Stokes, four of eight throwing, 80 yards for IWU. They ran for exactly 12 yards in the first quarter. Well, you mentioned it. They were staunch on the inside. They're there they trying, are again. Yeah, they're trying it again, but what's the old phrase? The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. And, and you might have to change things up, but the LTU defense again, uh, you know, let's get a big play on third down. You win first down. They've won second down. We've got to win this one right here. Lawrence Great Tech's job by defense. Dante Ban Tech defense has done a really good job today, rising to the challenge. Got to do it one more time here on third down. This might be two down territory. Let's, I would not be surprised to be a, either a quick hitter or another run here. Stokes facing pressure. Down he goes again. It's the second sack of the game for Tommy Lappin. Man, oh man, what a great job to come up with your first two of the year, right? Great job coming off the edge. But again, there was enough interior pressure where there's no escapability. A lot of times you get an edge rush and there's a hole, quarterback steps up. None of it. They stayed home where they were supposed to, caused that sack, and caused another punt. I'm telling you, there's a lot that the defense is going to be fired up about. Offense, let's do our job. You're the high-powered part of this team. We need to stack some positive plays together. Collins trying to pin Lawrence Tech back deep. He's going to get the job done. Long field to go as the Wildcats down it at the seven. I want to make mention of that special teams play. The receiver was making sure to do the fake fair catch about 25 yards from the ball, which generally draws the people coming down. They planned that to be the right side kick, and all the Wesleyan players, five or six guys, were around that ball knowing what was happening. Again, just a demonstration of all three facets. And those top teams in the country, they're not usually deficient in too many areas, in particular special teams. Another drive for Lawrence Tech on what has been a very interesting afternoon so far offensively. Kalka looking down the middle. It's caught for Jalen Wallace. That's a good start to the drive. Well, I'll tell you, I, I, it looks like they have an advantage at several of our receiver versus their DB positions. They're obviously playing a lot of zone coverage, which gives you some holes to throw into. We just have to make sure that we're proficient like that. Throw catch first down let's keep it rolling Lawrence Tech has been in the red zone twice tonight this afternoon and hasn't scored yet it's the evening somewhere right it's Absolutely tonight somewhere right right this game's not being played in London Keon Sanders trying to find a little room did find a little room good gain on first down well, I like how a very patient run there, but he kept following blockers on the patient run where he didn't stop his feet. Good five-yard gain. Again, that's a big win on first down for an offense. Second and five is a great play caller's position to be in. To use another football cliche, you are staying ahead of the chains. Very good. And, boy, you, you like when you're talking about your team and that cliche and right. combo. Kolka pumping, running, doing what he can. He did get back to the line of scrimmage. It's a bit of a cerebral play by Tyler. He realized nothing was working. I got to plow ahead and get what I can here to save third down and management. Yeah, they got, they got quick pressure up the middle. Would have loved to be able to get that swing pass. He was out there by himself. But sometimes when that's coming up the middle, that's a take care of the football situation. So you really can't blame him for that at all. And again, third and five, let's play the down. Lawrence Tech was three for three on third downs on their first drive of the game. Kendall Williams is out here one-on-one. -on -one. Oh. It's caught by Wallace. He is well short of the first down, but he did a great job of taking it away from Shelton, who nearly had his third pick of the game. 
Absolutely. I mean, Donovan Shelton, who entered today with one of the leading tackler numbers on the team. He's got 27 for Indiana Wesleyan. Number zero in white and red. Two picks and nearly a third. Tyler Kalka, frankly, should be going to Jalen Wallace and saying, thanks for saving my backside. Now. Absolutely. <laughs> Do not want to get the hat trick in that department as a quarterback. So heading to punt it away. And another short kick from Bryston Hedden. Fair catch made by Carter right around the 45. So now, Richie, I'm curious. We have been singing the praises of Lawrence Tech's defense all afternoon, and with good reason, they're playing their tails off. But how do you mentally and physically stay locked in when, frankly, your offense continues to put you in bad spots? Well, you, you and I have really seen this in, in the home games we've done. Is There's always been that scenario where they could give up something because they're not doing what they're supposed to do, and we've not seen them do it. The other team has made plays, don't get me wrong, but they're never not playing hard, and they're really playing well today. So you just keep at it. Indiana Wesleyan continues to try the run. It's Weems again, and Michael White headed red right from the snap. If you remember in drive one, that counter right there produced about a 14-yard run. They did a great job making sure they forced that ball to an inside-out player. The linebackers coming from the inside out and made a tackle again. Winning first down, second and nine. Back to that odd front. Let's see if they bring pressure again. Here comes the pressure. Good pass pattern to beat it. Quick throw to Gordon, who slipped the initial tackle and got awfully close to the first down. So, a yard shot. Talking about getting in either bad situations or being on the field too often, those are the things that start happening. That was actually a very good drove on the ball, made initial contact. But when you're out there a lot, you get just a little bit worn down and you, and you miss it instead of making it. So instead of third in, let's say four or five, it's third in one. Those are the things that start happening. There's so, an Indiana Wesleyan lineman down behind the play. Looks like the left tackle, Ben Farrell, number 64, is down. You know, we have a chance to talk about this, Richie. I was hoping we'd get a chance to mention this in the broadcast as Ben has helped to his feet and he's limping off the field for Indiana Wesleyan. Ben's a big dude. Went to North Point Christian High School in Grand Rapids. He's 6'4", 300 pounds. He didn't start his college career as a football player. He started in another sport. Take a guess which sport. Basketball. No, try again. Fencing. No, try again. I knew again. it was going to be an odd one. So swimming. He was a golfer. There you have it. At Cornerstone. He was a golfer. That's awesome. That's a lifelong sport for me. I'm sure he'll keep playing. You know what doesn't happen in golf? You don't get your knee twisted up or your ankle. <laughs> well, unless you're doing it horribly wrong. Wait, have you seen me golf? Not yet. <laughs> we'll get there. Carter on the run. It's a first down. Okay. Alibra made the tackle. Pretty important one as Carter had a lot of room to run. Well, I'll tell you, you, look at Carter being a runner, and they, they've definitely got him in some space, and that's part of what they do, obviously. But he is, again, he just doesn't go to a spot. He sees what's open, gets a vision, huge hole in that one. But on the other one down the sideline was the same thing. He stretched it all the way to the edge. Very smart runner. Pressure coming. Stokes avoids, throws, incomplete. Stevens Peppers could not hang on. Great play by Stokes, first to avoid the rush. He absolutely was going to run down the sideline. Receivers, he broke the pocket, sprint to where the quarterback's going. Puts him right on the money. Fortunate for the defense. They win first down again at second down and 10. Sometimes when you're trying to spring an upset, you need a break. It's been a couple of drop passes for IWU today. Yeah, it's two on two drives, two consecutive drives. Good call. Stokes alone in the gun. Bad snap, and he has to fall on the football. Well, he's right now, he's a little upset because that was an ill-timed snap. 
uh, he, I'm sure he was saying that was on two, my man, and you snapped it on one. I wasn't ready for it. And you could see it was a surprise for him. So now a third down and long for Indiana Wesleyan. Ball's at the 48 of LTU, and they got to get just inside the 29. This is darn near third down 20. Well, I'll tell you, just so impressed by the defense and how, like you know, you mentioned, how many times you can do it, and what their thought is is every time we have to, and you're, that's how they're playing right now. Stokes swings it out. Carter makes the catch. Slipped a tackle. Couldn't slip the second. Only a come out at the end of the play. Ryan Ramsey, the first man to him. Is there a decision to make here, Richie, for Indiana Wesleyan, or are they punting? They're bringing the punt unit on, so I guess they've made the decision. Would you have thought about it? No, I think, uh, well, okay, let's, where am I? Do I have a 15-point-a-game defense like they do? Pin them deep. Right. If I've got my a questionable defense or a great offense, maybe I do, but not this case. They've got a phenomenal defense, and they've showed it. They've held us to zero. Quick kick for Collins. Caught on the run by Williams. It's a pretty heady play as a returner. He'll let that ball bounce and roll. It's going to be down inside your tent. Absolutely. Great job just catching it. Love to see when a punt returner catches the football. Uh, I'm not sure I shared the numbers before. It's about a 16-yard average if you don't catch that ball that it continues to roll. Uh, so that right there is a negative one and a half first downs plus. Instead, little four-yard return. And in my books, that makes it a plus 20. All right. <laughs> Great job, Richie. Well done. You know, he can't help but smile when he says stuff like that. You know? Set your offense in a better, better spot. That's right. what I like to see. Right. Boy, shoot this, shoot this ball out to Kendall. I know he wants it. They start with a run for C.J. Davidson. He's done pretty darn well today. That time he got what he could as Indiana Wesleyan swarmed around him. Yeah, big time uh, pressure. Again, that, yeah, that gap sound, playing smart inside, what you gotta do to play good, to play well and stop rushes. Spencer Hathaway right there clogging it up. You know, Spencer entered today with only nine tackles on the year. Had a couple last week, and today he's done a great job, as you say, sucking up space. Absolutely. Free up those linebackers, D-line. That's what they do often. Kolka over the middle. Kendall Williams. He is a water bug when he gets the ball in his hands. Does a nice job making it a third down and more manageable. Absolutely. Nice job. Third down, a little bit more than five. I would say not quite six. Let's pick this bad boy up. Continue a drive. Hey, let's get something together before half. That would be phenomenal. So I'll tell you what, the defense is over there. They, they've got to be elated with how they played today. Keep in mind as well, Indiana Wesleyan will get the ball to start the second half. Kolka's got it on third down five. Incomplete across the middle. Trying to hit Rembert. Trying that little reverse whip where receiver is going to go like he's going to go to a speed out to the outside, plants his foot, and comes back inside. Uh, we saw it earlier on, on the catch that was made. Very fortunate. Just missed him on that one. Trying to utilize that speed and space. They've defended it well twice. So here comes the punt unit for Lawrence Tech. Bryston headed back in the field. A guy who averages nearly 40 yards a punt on the year, but the last two punts have maybe totaled 25 yards. That one nearly got blocked. And it checks up, not the way that Lawrence Tech would want. That's a great checkup on the golf course when you're trying to go for a birdie, but not in this scenario. Indiana Wesleyan gets their best starting field position of the afternoon. And, and he has just not hit the ball well today. You can tell something is not, not coming off his foot like it normally does, because as you said, he's about a 40-yarder. Tough one on that one. And the checkup, you just can't plan it. You're hoping that thing rolls out, as I mentioned earlier. Unfortunately, it catches that point the other way. Defense, stand up again. On the field a lot this half. Williams running right, 
to Darian Williams, pushed out by Mackenzie Alibra. Williams and Weems, the two-headed running back attack for Indiana Wesleyan. Weems, a freshman from Indiana. Williams, a junior from Lake Placid, Florida. Some, uh, someone might say, wait a minute, you're in Florida. Why are you going up to Indiana to play football? Because they want to play football. Yeah. And you know what? You find a spot, you get on the field, and you have fun. That's what it's all about. Oh, and we're number five, by the way. That works. Here's Jaquez Carter tiptoeing ahead for the first down. He's another Floridian. He's from Naples. Well, I tell you, Jaquez has shown us some, some nifty footwork and some good speed on that one. He showed some good power. He is a well-put-together wide receiver. Started his college career at Missouri State. Now found his way to Indiana Wesley. Tricky little spot here in the ball game. Coming up on three minutes to go first half. Indiana Wesleyan moving the ball down the field. And they get the ball to start the second half, too. We saw the kickers making them from 47 pretty, pretty easily in pregame in this direction. Nice tackle. Great secondary pressure right there. Ryan Crowley finally got him down, number 33 in blue and white. Again, you stop that running back's feet, though. It just absolutely gives you an opportunity to rally. He made the best of it. Nice loss on the play, setting up second and about 15. Again, defense rising up, takes him out of the field position to punt that ball. Now you're saying, hey, we're close to four down territory if we get a couple positive plays here unless we get close enough to get that field goal attempt. Popcorn pass, Carter. They ran it earlier for a big one. Not gonna work nearly as well this time as Crowley makes a second consecutive tackle. Great job keeping the edge contained and forcing him in again to the inside out runners, meaning the ball is past you, so you're running towards it from the inside of the field and someone's forcing him back into you. Great job right there, only giving up four yards. Nifty feet used, but a four yard gain with that guy, you'll take it every time. Before third down and 12, the flag flies. Timeout Lawrence Tech before the play. What an opportune timeout right there because that was offside us. Great job, staff trying to put something together. Hey. Can't take him with you and fold him over into the second half. So well used right there. As a certain radio host in this town once said, timeouts are not like cell phone minutes. They don't roll over. <laughs> I guess sitting out in the rain and watching Michigan State lose to Notre Dame will do that to a man. Got to find something, don't you? Yes. All right, so while we've got a minute here, let's update you on what the schedule looks like for Lawrence Tech down the stretch. They enter this ball game two and three. They're at Siena Heights next week, at Concordia week after that. Then it's back-to-back -back home games to wrap up the regular season. St. Francis here on November 5th, and Marion here on November 12th. That is quite the close to the season. Doesn't get easier, does it? They're in a phenomenal league, and that's, that's the league you want to be in. Play action for Stokes. Long throw, caught by Carter. <coughs> tried to get there and tried to stretch. It's going to be awfully close. He's short. Now what do you do? Official said he had his uh, foot on that sideline. With as strong as they are and as good as they are in this position, I'm going for it. See what they do. Keep in mind, this Indiana Wesleyan team has struggled running the football consistently in the first half. They barely ran for 10 yards in the first quarter. Lawrence Tech in bodies late on the field. Oh my goodness, they got him off in time. There are a lot of moving parts right now. Well, they just tried to draw him offside and they had him at the center snap the ball, but that was a far edge. Pretty tough for him to see that one. And Probably an upcoming field goal now to get points would be my guess. You know, Indiana Wesleyan calls their first timeout. Richie, what I'm kind of confused about watching that play going on, Lawrence Tech has a timeout left and bodies are coming on and off the field. If they snap it, 
you got 12 guys on the field and, and an automatic first down. Why, why didn't they call a timeout? Or, or why didn't Indiana Wesleyan snap the ball? Right. You've got, you've got an experienced QB. He's just fire, 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 clap, and the ball snapped, and it's 12 men on the field, throw the ball out of bounds, who cares? So you had a couple of aspects that were going on right there. I'm not sure why they ran that play around so late. Maybe it's part of their big package, and they put out a linebacker and got a big interior lineman. But, yeah, that was a tough one both ways. Fortunately, it worked out where I'm, we're going to see what Wesleyan's going to do now and if we can get a stop or block a field goal. It looks like they're going to go for it as I see first offense is back on the field. If I'm them, number eight's touching the rock. Somehow, some way, I'm going to get the ball in his hands. Carter is on the field, the left side of the formation, nearest side of your screen. Play action, the roll, the look downfield. Stokes trying to run for it, navigating the sideline. He got it. Very heads up play by the QB. He was looking for Jacquez on a corner route. Love the play, give him that run pass option. He didn't see anything downfield. First down, Wesleyan Wildcats. And now you follow how they handle the clock. 100 seconds to go in the first half. Two timeouts and they're getting the ball to start the second half. You love that it landed right on 100 seconds. I heard it in your voice. <laughs> Every once in a while, it just comes the broadcaster's way. You know <laughs> what I mean? There you have it. There's Carter with a flag. We've got a hold on this one on the edge. You're going to put yourself out in a limb on that one? Yeah. I think you're going to win this bat, Richie. Go, oh, could possibly be a block in the back. Let's see. I could be wrong, but it's definitely something on the edge. But again, I like I like their their theory here. Is hey, look, we're not we're not doing well running up the middle. So let's keep doing what has been working for us. Get Jacquez on the edge. Fortunately for us, little hold right there sets him back ten yards. First and twenty. Yeah, now the arithmetic changes here. You can get a first down without scoring a touchdown, but you got to get to Lawrence Tech's three, and the ball's at the 22. Not ideal. Again, I, I'm just so impressed with, and you mentioned it several times, how many times you keep doing it. They just keep doing it. Got that pressure odd front set coming. Stokes rolling away from pressure oh. again. Throw is caught as Tidwell brings it in. Nice play again. Again, you, the, when I was talking to the QB coach, he said the, the number one area of growth in Mr. Stokes has been his poise. You can see he just doesn't panic. Does, does, doesn't throw it up. You know, takes calculate. hey, he might get sacked, but you know what? The ball is still ours. Those are the kinds of things you like in a quarterback. Navigating the pocket is such an oh, art. Right? Absolutely. Go watch Tom Brady play on Sundays. To Carter with room to roam. Jacquez Carter got a block, and he's got a touchdown. Well, that's such a, a neat screen that's made up where you throw what looks like a swing pass, but because it's behind the line of scrimmage, the whole line can go down the field in high school and college. You saw two leading big fellas out there one little push, a little, uh, little, little crack for Jaquez to exploit. 13 nothing at this point. Ethan Collins on to tack on the extra point. He has missed three this year. First one was good. And the second one is good. So Indiana Wesleyan despite the best efforts of a Lawrence Tech defense that frankly has been put behind the eight ball all afternoon, has managed to put 14 points on the board. Now, Richie, I'm curious. Lawrence Tech does not get the ball to start the second half. They do have 80 seconds, but they only have one timeout. How are you attacking this drive as an offensive coordinator? It's all gonna be on field position. If, if we get good field position, we could be a little bit more aggressive. If it's something we're around the 20, 25, which with their special teams play is what you can hope for and probably going to get somewhere around there. Uh, maybe you do the draw screen. Hey, let's pop something, see where we are. Because you cannot. I don't even want to say it because if I say it, it might happen. Then everybody out there listens to you. I wish that guy didn't say it, so I'm not saying it. Everybody knows it. 
But hey, let's just string some things together positively and come out in the second half. Our defense has been real strong today. So your hope is, hey, maybe we do pop something here and get some points. If not, we're starting with our defense that's been very strong. Here's Collins to kick it away. He is but a busy man. Good luck and kick. Will be a chance for a return. It's Blaine Woodland. And the starting field position not ideal, shy of the 20. So this is where you, you know, you pop that possible screen, little draw, maybe even just run the clock out. You know, you have only one timeout. And the other side of the coin is, you know, you're two and three, you're playing a really good team. Our offense does do very, very well. We are explosive. Maybe you just try and hit a guy in space and see what can happen. I'm telling you right now, that's what Kendall wants. Well, the what tricky, every receiver wants. Yeah, but the tricky thing here as well is Indiana Wesleyan does have those two timeouts, so they can, they can play the, the time game here as well if they Absolutely. so choose. Absolutely. Pitch left in the hands of Sanders for barely an inch. Got to block the first person who's a threat. We ran by one there, and it makes it very, very difficult to be successful on offense. Uh, we saw it in the sack with the running back from Wesleyan missing a, a blitz pickup. Saw it right there. LTU moving fast. Kalka looking downfield. Got a guy open. It's C.J. Thompson spinning his way near the 40, and now you can really start to go. Absolutely, 40 seconds to go, 39 seconds to go. Keep moving down the field, keep moving down the field. Clock still ticking. 30 seconds on the clock right now. Kalka fields it at 27 seconds. Looking downfield again. Throwing incomplete. Smart play right there. Smart play by Tyler. Don't have anything, just throw the ball over one's head. Near my guy. Second down and 10, 19 seconds. Defensively, considering that Lawrence Tech has the one timeout, you probably got to get 30 yards here to even think about a field goal. Right. How does Indiana Wesleyan play defensively here? I'm, I'm, um, they may go down to the, the odd front, which is just three defensive rushers. You put eight in coverage, possibly pressure, but probably playing again. They know they're getting the football. They've got a really good defense. Let's just defend area. Second exactly down. what they did. Yep, Kalka can check it down to Rembert. He had to get the first down to stop the clock, and boy, did he. Probably take their time out here. Try and work the edges a little bit. Get a little closer and possible field goal attempt. Again, you're still in need. 17, 18 yards for a legitimate shot, I would say. There's an underrated part to this drive, though, Richie. Even if you don't score, you get a little bit of momentum going into halftime because the fact of the matter is, no matter if you score here, you're still going to be down at half. You kind of got to believe as the defense, hey, if we keep getting stops, the offense will give us something, and the offense has got to believe we will give that defense something at some point. So this drive is proving to you, yes, we can get the ball downfield. I know it's been a while since those first couple of good drives. Right. We can get the ball down the field. Yeah, they, they've demonstrated it. They've had two very, very good drives. You know, you look back at second and goal on the one, or first and goal on the one. Uh, but again, coming back into it, this is the best drive since those two. String it together, get on the sideline out there on the left-hand side, but it's a long throw. Kalka given the time. It's dumped down to Sanders, and that is not be what Lawrence Tech wanted. That's going to take you to halftime. So at halftime, Lawrence Tech taking on the number five team in the country trailing the football game 14 to nothing. The defense, quite frankly, has played outstanding in adverse conditions. But Lawrence Tech's offense struggling twice. They've gone into the red zone today and come up with bupkis. You don't want to come up with bupkis in the red zone. No. And uh, in particular when you're trying to pull something. Pull Avon something Mitchell, in. head coach, standing by with Elizabeth on the sidelines. 
Take it. Take it, Nick. Hey guys, we're here with Coach Mitchell. I mean, we got to start with your defense. They've been putting a lot of pressure on the ball. How are you looking to keep that going in the second half? Oh, we just got to read our keys. Our guys are flying around well and they're playing for each other. So, I mean, a lot of big plays kind of keeping us in this thing right now. So, they're doing a good job. Yeah, and you guys have honestly been pushing the ball up the field really well. How are you looking to finish going into the second half? <laughs> no more turnovers. If we do that, we'll be just fine. Yeah, and you guys have been playing so tough. How proud are you of this team so far going into half? Extremely. I mean, I told our guys it's going to be a fight. You know, it's a great ball club we're playing against, but um, we're going to clean some things up at halftime and then finish the game strong. Yeah, thank you, Coach. Thank you. Back to you guys. Thank you. Coach Mitchell understanding that it's a long football game and there's good to take away, but frankly, that score is what the score is. Indiana Wesleyan up 14-0 at half. The second half starts in about 18 minutes. Come on. Sports Network. Keep in that position when the pull's not good. <laughs>
All righty, we're back at Lawrence Tech getting ready for the start of the second half. Blue Devils looking for their first home win of the year. It would be quite the home win against the fifth ranked team in the country, Indiana Wesleyan. Indiana Wesleyan up 14-0 at the break. Evan Stockton, Richie Pop, alongside the rest of our crew. Glad you're making a little time for us, wherever you may be, on this middle of October Saturday afternoon. A lot of great college football today. Glad you're making some time for Lawrence Tech and Indiana Wesleyan. All right, Richie, so frankly, let's call a spade a spade. The offense for Lawrence Tech didn't do its job in the first half. Got in the red zone twice, could never score. The defense sure did their job. They're about to come back in the field as Lawrence Tech kicks off to start the second half. How defensively against a great team can you continue to stay mentally locked in when you're wondering how many times you got to give a stop to get your offense a shot here, right? It's got to be frustrating. Absolutely. And a, a testimony to what they've built here at Lawrence Tech, not one play did they take off. Wesleyan had a couple big plays, but not one play was it because someone wasn't playing hard. You know, they, they hit an edge play, then they hit a screen again on the edge. Jack Wes has had a phenomenal first half and game so far, but they have got to be flying high. They turned the ball over three times, and they've only given up 14 points. They've done a great job, and they need to continue to do it. Focus, focus, focus. This is a good start. Powerful kick for Carter Dixon, puts it into the end zone, and means it's a touchback, so Indiana Wesleyan will start their drive after the touchback. The most impressive thing that Lawrence Tech did in that first half defensively, Richie, holding Indiana Wesleyan, a team that on the season loves to run it. They run it at nearly 150 yards per game. I'd ask you to guess how many rushing yards they have in the first half, but I told you they had eight total rushing yards in the first half. couple sacks there, but their interior play against the run has been phenomenal, and they shut down that counter with the edge play being better and forcing stuff inside. Need to keep that up, and they need to start out here either with a turnover or a quick three and out. Indiana Wesley, an extremely late, getting a wide receiver on the field, and they elect to burn a timeout. Richie, I've always wanted to ask a coach this, so I'm gonna just ask it to you. In that situation, First play of the second half, you're up by 14. You never know how the game's going to go. You may need that timeout later. Why would you not just take the five-yard penalty? Why burn a timeout there? Well, I, I, it's so funny because I was going to say, how uncharacteristic for a great program to run a kid out that late. It's the first play of the half. You just huddled up. But to your point, I think starting first and 15 at your own 20, you're up 14-0. You're trusting your defense. At the most, it's going to give up 15. So you're saying your offense is not scoring and we're giving up 15. Probably not going to happen. But I just think setting yourself back in a negative play in the first play of the half, I've seen where you, I agree with you 100%, take the five yards and kick the field goal, whatever it is. But coaches do it all the time and burn a timeout early, and that's tough to take. First give of the second half goes to Daniel Weems for maybe a yard. I don't know if our production crew can get a shot of this, but i just like to tell you what's going on right outside the stadium. There are about 25 different police cars with an escort because about a half mile down the road, the vice president is about to speak at Southfield A&T High School. What an incredible year, uh, incredible weekend for the high school. Last night, James Franklin from Penn State lands in a helicopter for a game. Now Camilla's coming in to speak. What a phenomenal weekend here in the center of it all. Stokes throws to the sidelines, and that pass is apparently caught. Wow, what a job by Carter getting his feet down. Phenomenal job of dragging that foot for a first down play. Great ball outside. Only his guy's going to get it. Great body control on a first down. Big play after a good run stop on first down by LTU. There are still uh, police cars and motorcycles after motorcade going on outside the stadium right now. It's at least 30 of them. Stokes throwing incomplete. And look, I, I all know politics is a touchy subject. Lord knows we're not going to touch on that. But anytime the vice president speaks right by where you are, that's pretty cool. I don't care what your political leanings are, that's pretty cool. 
And the other side of the coin is when you usually see that mass amount of police cars, it's not usually a positive thing. Right. In this case, it is, and we're going to ride that wave. 100%. Big time miscommunication there, quarterback and receiver. Well underthrown ball. I'm sure he was waiting for him to break to the inside, and he kept running in the post instead of maybe a dig route. Second down, Stokes has got the ball, evading consistent pressure all day. He's got to throw it away. Lawrence Tech, time after time, is making Xander Stokes make quick decisions in that pocket. Well, they're getting him, off, getting him off of his spot. He likes to stay on it. You can see it. He is doing a great job maneuvering in there. We've got a couple of sacks on him. Again, you're winning first and second down. We have to win third down and get them off the field. Line to gain the 49 of Lawrence Tech. Third down 10, and a big one early in the third quarter. Stokes given the time. Long throw, incomplete. Seven on seven crime. He was hoping for Gordon, but a Libra had the airtight coverage. Great job, little undercut right there, a high ball, that one had to be right on the money because the, the coverage was excellent. Boy, back to that defense and hats off to him. Great job on the stop. So now Ethan Collins on to punt as Kendall Williams, the man back deep. Angled right side of the field. Collins had no interest in letting that ball get in the hands of Williams. And Lawrence Tech will start inside their 20. All right, Richie, I'm about to pay you a free compliment. Okay. You're the offensive coordinator for one of the best high school football offenses in the state of Michigan. Your Southfield A&T Warriors struggled last night and still scored 28 points. So you know something about offense. How are you trying to get the offense going for Lawrence Tech here? Boy, I, I am not kidding. I would go back to what they did in the first drive. They had a couple short passes to the tight end in the middle. Their run game has been excellent. Go back to what has worked. They've got space right now, as you can see it on the picture, with the number two receiver, number seven, just popping the ball. Something positive is going to happen when you get the ball in space to a receiver. Let's see what happens. C.J. Davidson running right, wading through the traffic, gaining about seven on first down. Davidson had a really solid first half. Six carries, 59 yards. It's nearly 10 yards a carry. Well, I'll tell you what, and again, that is a play that's been quite proficient. So the coaching staff, in a different manner, went right back to what's been working well. The O-line, for some reason, has fallen in love with that play. And trust me, as an O coordinator, if they're falling in love with it, stick with it. Great job. And CJ is really hitting the hole with a great Good. burst. I love it. No waiting around. Right back to him. I think they just ran the exact same play. They didn't need much. They didn't gain much, but it is a Lawrence Tech first down. First down. Hey, if you're running twice and getting 11 yards, that's a really, really good thing to go back to. Amen. Two and a half minutes into the second half. Lawrence Tech already with a defensive stop. Offense on the field. Finally trying to break down the defensive dam that is Indiana Wesleyan. Kolka with a whole lot of time. Long deep throw. Oh, what a catch! Jaden Rembert down the sidelines! He's short of the pylon. But that may be the offensive play of the year. How in the world did he catch that football? So let's go back to the earlier throw when we didn't throw it on time. He hits the whole shot. To me, the most impressive part, the one-hand stuff you said, he actually got pulled by the defender and still made the catch with his unbelievable body control. And then with a little, uh, little Jedi mind trick out there with Zigan and Zagan, and he gets some inside First and goal on the four yard line, and I bet the snap goes to the quarterback this time. I would think that's a pretty good guess. Kolka, rolling right, 
Got a block on the outside. Tried to hit Rembert again, just wide of his diving fingertips. Great effort, great job keep, keeping the play alive. Again, that scramble drill, my guy's running away. I gotta go find him. Rembert did a great job to get in his vision. Just a little bit outside on that throw. Boy, what a score would be to the offense right here. Yeah, I got you. On a day where Lawrence Tech's offense has been in the red zone twice and never scored, they're hoping third time's the charm. I'm looking for that run inside here. Let's see if they go back to it. It's a throw to the corner and a touchdown for Jalen Wallace. Beautiful job. Beautiful job. All that work by the defense has just paid off. 14 to six against one of the best teams in the country. That's gonna bolster the confidence on both sides. You get another look here. Tyler Kalk is not necessarily a runner, but he was able to get the job done there. And Lawrence Tech, they're alive now. We didn't get to see it on that replay, but a great ball position, low and outside. Again, don't forget that young safety number zero has already had two picks today, and he still went at them. Great catch, great play. 14-7, we got a ball game. I think if you had told Avant Mitchell at halftime, hey, not even four minutes into the second half, your defense is going to get a stop, and then you're going to get a touchdown with a passing play of over 50 yards, he go, where in the world do I sign up for that? That sounds pretty good. And, and it's going to be a one-score score game, Avant. Oh, I'm in. I, I'm, I'm in. I'm, I'm put, okay, I'll take it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Need to keep that momentum rolling. And again, I'll tell you, the, the, the importance of the defense part is they're, they're really throwing Wesleyan off their normal gain of just being methodical. 31 points a game they score, methodically moving it down, their defense setting them up in good field position. Just absolutely flip that around. Great job. Carter Dixon, his kick will be fielded by Justin Johnson. Number one, hoping for a big return. Not gonna come as he barely gets across the 20. Great coverage right there. And again, great lane responsibility and discipline by LTU on that return. Good job by the kickoff team. So now, Richie, we turn our attention to how Indiana Wesleyan attacks this situation. Uh, we've sung the praises of Lawrence Tech, rightfully so, defensively all day, but you'd have to imagine IWU's offense is going what in the world's going on here? Absolutely, and, and I'm telling you, the other thing is you're not looking at a case, well, maybe they're looking past Lawrence Tech. Lawrence Tech is just playing that well today. Try on the left side with room. It's Stevens Peppers escorted out of bounds. Markel Stevens Peppers with one of the finer names in collegiate football. That's a good gain on first down. Absolutely, good call on the name, love that. And again, what they, they went back to, what they have had success with is that little jet sweep, uh, technically a pass, you call it a popcorn pass. And, and they got outside again, but there was not the edge support that they needed to turn it in on that one. Got to keep figuring that out. Second down, quick throw, Carter. First down, Jaquez Carter. Man, when you get him in the open field, if you are rooting against him, your heart goes into your throat. Absolutely, 100%. And you ask what they're gonna do, they're gonna get the ball in their hands of their playmakers out on the edge in space. Hey, they're not foolish over there. LTU's been absolutely steadfast, strong wall up the middle. Let's not go there. Don't beat our heads against a wall. Get the ball in space to our athletes. First down, 10. Stokes over the middle, incomplete. I think they were trying to get Carter on a middle screen, but he got lost in the traffic there. Yeah, linebacker did a great job of getting some hands on him, and we forced with a little pressure an early throw, second up, setting up second and 10.
Couple of substitutions for Lawrence Tech. Trying to keep that defense fresh on another pivotal defensive series. Frankly, they're just all important uh, down the stretch. Absolutely. When you play good teams, they're all important. And, and you mentioned getting a break on occasion. There was another one right there. Very good pass by Stokes. Little bit of a drop, setting up third and 10. Defense again, standing tall. Couple big hits early in this series, but they're standing tall right now. Got to get them off the field, force a punt. Lawrence Tech's defense, time and again today, has found a way to stand tall. They got to stand tall again here, third down 10. Play action for Stokes. All the time in the world. Gripping it and ripping it. It's a first down to that guy again. Carter is having a day. Absolutely, and he is absolutely the safety blanket for Mr. Stokes, and he keeps finding him in the most important parts and situations during the game. Unfortunately, we have an LTU player down. I can't see the number right now, but it almost looks like friendly fire of the second tackler coming in. He's moving around a little bit, so that's good news. For what it's worth, Jaquez Carter just caught his 10th pass of the game. And yeah, now we focus on the Lawrence Tech man down in the field. Hey, Richie, give IWU's offense credit. They've had a bit of a frustrating day, but on a third down line, the offensive line gives the quarterback time. And in traffic, he threw a strike right down that middle of the field. Absolutely, and it was not as if that was not a well-covered play. He just put the ball exactly where it needed to be, and as you stated, Mr. Carter is doing it all right today. He entered the day with 29 catches on the year, which is pretty good. He's nearly, he is, a third of the way there to his season total in one day. Absolutely. By the way, he also had 10 catches last week. So apparently they figured out the offensive formula the last two weeks. Just find number eight and throw him the ball. And what's really important, make sure he gets the ball. Right. We talked about it down near the goal line. He ended up getting the ball. That's what you do. Get the ball to your playmakers. High snap. Stokes brings it down. This is a busted play. A Libra makes the tackle after a gain of two. I'd actually like to see that. It almost looked as if it was going to be a bubble to Jaquez. And if that looks covered, it almost is as if they were blocking QB counter left. I'd have to see a replay for sure, uh, which is a really neat scheme because then you have double dip there, you know, let your quarterback run for some. Well defended, though, by LTU. Again, you're under two yards gained. You're winning that first down. Play action, down the middle, man wide open. Stevens, Peppers caught that one. He is still running. Down to the five. Well, I'll tell you what, you've got a three and then you finish the other guy with your backwards three on it, you got an eight. Those two guys are extremely dynamic. Wow, what a play. Great play action, excellent timing on the throw. This time when it hits his hands, he does catch it. Big play for the Wildcats. Stevens Peppers has dropped two passes today. Wasn't dropping that one. Got him in great field position. First and goal on the five. Wildcat formation. Xavier Gordon back there for Indiana Wesleyan. Running all the way left. In and for a touchdown. Well, there's the answer. What are you going to do? You get the, uh, the ball in your hands of, of playmakers and, and let them go play football and not one up the middle run. And whether or not that was QB counter or not, again, it was looking to get on the edge, not stay in the middle. Very well, well-conceived drive there by the Wildcats and their staff. But the execution by the players is what it always comes down to, and they did a great job right there. You, they overcame that third and long and a drop pass early on that series and also hit a couple of really big plays. 
Extra point for Ethan Collins is up, and it is good. And sometimes, Richie, you just have to give credit to the other side. Lawrence Tech with a dream start to the second half. But top five team in the country has battle tested an Indiana Wesleyan with a very impressive drive to equal their largest lead of the game. Absolutely, and, and that's what you do as, as a power team, is you come right back and have an answer, and that's what makes them a power team. The other side of the coin is Lawrence Tech wants to be at that level, and they're, they're climbing to be there. Now it's their turn to do the same thing. Get a decent return, get some field position. Whether or not you do, doesn't matter for the offense. Get out there, string another series together. You're gonna need big plays though. Coach talked about it, explosive plays, we have to have more than they do. Got to limit theirs. Got to limit their possessions. All that wrapped up gets you an opportunity. Up to the offense to take over here and get it back to a one-score game. So Collins about to kick it away for IWU. Woodland and Broaden, the two men back deep for Lawrence Tech. For what it's worth, they have yet to return a kickoff for a touchdown this season. Frankly, that feels like it's becoming a lost start at all levels of football as they continue to move the kickoffs up and guys aren't returning it as much as they used to. Well, you also have all the rules in play about double teaming and hands together and all kinds of stuff that come into play, as well as, you know, the guys on special teams once upon a time may have not always been top athletes. Everybody now who's playing is out there who is a good football player and that makes a big difference. It's a windy day. The ball was just uh, flown off the tee by the wind, so we had to re-tee it. Shorter kick. Indiana Wesleyan hoping for Lawrence Tech not to spring a big one, but they still kind of do spring a big one. One of the up men on the return. Was guy wearing 95 on the return, but that's that's a dummy jersey, so it's tough for us to tell underneath the jersey who that was on the return. We apologize in advance. All right, we're going to find out now. Here it comes. That was, I believe that was Mauricio Jenkins, the there tight you end. Have it. Great job. Hey, we're a couple of weeks from Halloween. He was just wearing a costume. That's you know what right. I mean? That's what happens. You play different positions. That's what you got to have. All righty, here we go. Lawrence Tech, one drive and one touchdown in the second half. They got to keep scoring here if they want to come back and beat the fifth-ranked team in the country. This is a run for Keon Sanders. Tough to bring him down. Did gain a couple. Good fight right there. Nice job. He was initially stopped for probably zero and fought for a couple of yards. Again, positive play after positive play after positive play. Actually, looks like he snuck out about three on that one. Good job. Sanders only has seven combined carries in the last couple of weeks. Carried it four times in the first half. 5'10 sophomore from Pontiac. Went to Waterford Mott High School. Mott High School in Waterford. Right back to him. Similar looking play, similar looking result. Third down coming up. Got to put it together. They got pretty good starting field position on a good return. I really liked how the return man just ran straight ahead, didn't try and go side to side. Did a nice job getting that ball up to the 36 yard line. Got to get this third down and six and keep this drive alive. Coming up on six and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. Each team has scored a touchdown in this quarter. Kolka with pressure coming. He evades the pressure, throws across his body. Thompson is open. First down Lawrence Tech, but there is a flag behind the play. The flag was thrown near the Indiana Wesleyan sideline. Free play, good decision. And now we can officially sing the praises of Kolka. That was a great job by Tyler on that play, huh? Absolutely phenomenal. And you know he and CJ have that great chemistry because they've been together a while. 
and we've noted the story. You know, he came here as a defensive end, moved to the tight end. Phenomenal job right there. And him staying with it, Kalka finding him. Can't believe he found him. He's rolling one way. He was completely the opposite side of the field. That's trust. Give Sanders. He's been the bell cow on this drive. Game maybe two. Hey, they did a great job keeping that alive. Again, a positive play. Just keep stacking them and good things happen, and that's what we're seeing. That clock continues to tick. We're getting closer and closer to five minutes to go in the third quarter. May not end up being a must-score drive, but kind of feels like one for Lawrence Tech. Kolka off the play action. Wide open man. It's Mauricio Jenkins. Just his fourth catch of the year. It sets up first down and goal. Well, you know, he had an excellent kickoff return, you know, which was written up in the plan. So let's go ahead and get him his another, another catch. Good job. Great read. Way to find the hole and him to catch that football. Again, tough catch. No one around me. Got to make it. Here we are. First and goal, six yard line, let's punch one in. Fourth trip into the red zone for Lawrence Tech this afternoon. Kolka, looking left, throwing left. Rembert adjusting to the ball. Another great catch. Touchdown, Lawrence Tech. Phenomenal little rub route, outside receiver in, inside receiver out. Great timing on that throw. That ball was in the air well before Mr. Rembrandt was looking. Great adjustment again. We saw that earlier on the phenomenal catch after being swiped by a DB one-hander down the sideline. Huge answer for Lawrence Tech. Offense has come out on fire. They didn't score in the first half. The machine is working in the second half. The extra point up and good for Vincent Robinson. And Lawrence Tech taking on a top five team is not going away. Absolutely love it. Let's pin them deep here. Get a quick three and out, or even better yet, let's cause a turnover on their side. But they're known for not turning the ball over. You know, they have zero interceptions uh, thrown by the QB. They're, they're a good program, but we've got to cause one that would help us so much. Jaden Rembert uh, wearing the king's crown on the sidelines. He almost looked reluctant. Everyone came over and was trying to celebrate. He went, yeah, 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 okay, I get it. Got to go do it again. Right. Been there once, I'm going back again. Right. I do the game winner, I'll sit there for an hour. <laughs> I'll sit there the rest of the night. <laughs> yeah, a little cold maybe the rest of the night, but yeah. you get my point. Carter Dixon kicking it away again. Chance for a return, it's Justin Johnson. Run and left, and the hole closed quickly, right around the 30. You talk about, Richie, throughout this broadcast, the culture that's being laid and built here at Lawrence Tech. Frankly, a game like this speaks to your culture. You're two and three, you haven't won a home game yet this year, you're taking on a top five team, you're down 14 nothing at the half. You see what the score is right now. This is a dogfight. And I'll tell you, the defense has set that up without a doubt in that first half. I know it was 14 points, but there were three turnovers. They did a phenomenal job in that first half. We need to keep it up right here. Much better turning it inside. Not a 35-yard run as we've been seeing on that play. Good job. Hold them to four. Much better edge support there to push him inside to the help. So with the way this, goes, this game is going right now, what do you think Indiana Wesleyan's thought process is here? Well, you saw it right there in the first play. Continue to get the guy who are making, the guys who are making plays this particular game, the ball. Run game up the middle is not the answer. So let's not beat our heads with it. Let's do what we do well. Stokes got tipped. Tommy Lappin has two sacks. And now a pass deflection today. 
He is all over the place. And again, they were going out there, quick little throw to the edge, get it on the edge, win it, third and long, huge play for the defense right here. Indiana Wesleyan on their last drive converted a pivotal third and 10 as they went for a touchdown. Here's a third down and seven. Stokes bobbles the snap and throws incomplete. That play looked wrong from the beginning. Second, second miscommunication between Stokes and the receiver. And the way the coach is pretty adamant over there, I believe the receiver who was supposed to go out went in. The ball went out. Again, though, credit to the Lawrence Tech defense. Great job standing up. Catch this football young man. Get us a good return. Offense come back out on fire. Sideline is buzzing down there. That is fun to see. Kendall Williams about to receive the Ethan Collins punt. He's been angling it away from him all day, and Kendall makes the fair catch at the 25. Lawrence Tech's offense, twice in the red zone in the first half, never scored. Two drives in the second half, they've scored twice. Let's see what drive number three brings. Got it to a one-score game. Boy, oh boy, I'd love to see him tie it up and see what happens. <coughs> As I mentioned, that sideline is buzzing. Everyone is flying around. Excitement has been built. Keep it rolling, oh. I mean, look, when you're trying to pull off an upset like Lawrence Tech is today against fifth-ranked team in the country, frankly, you just have to believe. Absolutely. you got to get to the fourth quarter with a shot. Absolutely. I think they're believing now. If they aren't, they should be. Kolka sacked. Pressure gets home. It's Caleb Williams, the former Harrison Hawk. Well, they come home. That's the second one. Our Traverse City from St. Francis player earlier. Now Caleb from down the road and Harrison. Big sack right there. It's going to set up second down in about 19. You may know the history of Caleb Williams' alma mater. Harrison, unfortunately, no longer exists. That may be the greatest high school football program in the history of Michigan. They won 13 state championships under one of the best high school coaches in the history of America, you could argue. Absolutely. Absolutely. Second down, 17. Kolka trying to run away from Williams again. A desperate deep throw, and... It's an interception. Oh, what a play. Clayton Mosier with the pick and one of the best interceptions you'll ever see. Absolutely. Great diving play. Man, oh, man, ill-advised late throw down. Great play, though, by him to come over in that open space. And that's what happens when you're on... A really, really good football team. Guys are in the right spots at the right time and make plays, and that's what you see right there. We're talking about getting a score to tie it up. No, sir. We're going to take the ball back, and we're going to start running it the other way. Give to Williams. A very patient run with not a whole heck of a lot going on. Did get a couple. So you got that motion with Jacquez coming one way. A lot of eyes have been going to him. He's having a great day. Run that counter the other way. Pretty good concept right there as well. Good job by the defense, only giving up a couple yards. Frankly, Richie, this is a song that Lawrence Tech's defense can't get stuck out of their head. Another opportunity where their ears are pinned back and they've just got to find a way to get it done. Absolutely. Got to cause a punt. Williams, good run up the middle. It is third down, but not a lot to go. Probably their best middle run right there for about six yards to set up third down and one. Again, you mentioned earlier, nice patient run. There again, he was very patient, followed his blocks, and got a nice little inside run. Coming up on 90 seconds to go, third quarter. Seven point lead for Indiana Wesleyan and a third down long one. Give Weems right up the gut for a first down. 
So you talk about the strength and the staunch rock-like wall set up by the defense throughout the game. But again, when you're out on that field so many minutes and so many plays, you just end up getting worn down. And it's kind of those two middle runs have been a bit of an example of that right there. Got to probably get in some shuffling. They've done a good job of getting players in and out. Probably looking to do that again. Trouble with the snap. They did get it to Weems, and it ended up being a pretty good play after a very inauspicious start. Absolutely. Good, good job securing the football to begin with. And again, there's that middle. These are like those body blows in a boxing match. Punch, 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 wear them down. And that's right now what the Wildcats have going. Another high snap. Weems running and getting the first down. Indiana Wesleyan in some choppy waters on the last couple of plays, finding a way to get around them. I think you go back to what I was stating earlier, you know, the good programs who are consistent and doing things right and obviously rank very high, they make plays when sometimes you think, oh, maybe we could get a, that high snap for a long fumble and set them back. Instead, there's a catch, a give, and a first down to flip that around to a positive. Off to the fourth quarter and a one-score game. Indiana Wesleyan with a football in the red zone. The fourth quarter next on the LTU Sports Network. Please welcome the LTU dance team. Dance by Because every athlete deserves to be treated like a pro. Henry Ford Sports Medicine. Talking about finances can be confusing, difficult, scary, murky even. But it doesn't have to be with Money Mentor by Michigan First Credit Union on your side. More than 90 years ago, Michigan First was founded on the principle of putting education first. Today, Money Mentor continues that tradition because affording the lifestyle you want isn't always easy. Check us out at michiganfirstmoneymentor.com or follow us on social media for tips, tricks, blogs, and videos today. Back to Lawrence Tech. Fifth ranked team in the country in town. It's Indiana Wesleyan with the lead and the ball. They're at Lawrence Tech's 20, first down 10 coming up. Evan Stockton, Richie Pop, glad you're making some time for us on a busy football Saturday across the country. Good one here in Southfield and a big time opportunity for Lawrence Tech's defense to once again make a play and make a stand. Been doing it all game, they've got to stand up tall again in a one score game, bring pressure. Oh boy, a well-timed blitz. This play is going nowhere. A big time loss. It was all started by 33, Ryan Crowley. Boy, it sure looked like he got out of that tackle, ran backwards a couple yards, and they're giving him forward progress for only a five yard loss. It looked like it was gonna be more than that. But again, a well-timed run blitz, get that Get that runner to stop his feet, forward momentum, rally to the ball. Great example right there. Couple of different interior linemen on D. Second down and long. Long roll Stokes. Got it in the hands for Weems, but not very much. And it's all on the table for Lawrence Tech here. Third down, long. Get yourselves off the field and stay in the game in the fourth quarter. Absolutely. Let's cause at least an attempt at a field goal. And Hold them short of a first down. Win for the defense. You know, you look at the score and it's 21-14. It's so you guys keep talking about how well the defense played it. They've given up 21 points. There were three first half turnovers that they overcame and they've only given up one score in the second half. Very impressed with their effort today. Knocked away! Stokes was trying to set up a screen. Active hands 
creating fourth down. That's Jackie Johnson, the pride of Honolulu, making the play. There you have it. Got a couple of, I'm sure we have some people out in Hawaii watching the locking areas as Cole's on the team, and I bet everyone out there is jumping for joy right now. So now Indiana Wesleyan brings on the kicker, Ethan Collins. His long this year is 44. This one will be about 40. High snap, put down, kick on the way, and there's a flag before the play. Oh my goodness, it's a delay of game. And it was right down the middle, so back it up five yards. Have to try and do it again. And now, Richie, if Collins makes this kick, it would equal his longest of the year. And if he fails to, which is our hope, to be quite honest, as a biased bias broadcasting team here, we get decent field position, get an opportunity to again, go tie the game. Collins was one for four kicking field goals last week. This would equal his longest of the season. Good snap, good hold, kick on the way, and it is no good. Wide right. We heard that a few years ago, wide right, the whole Florida State, Bobby Bowden, probably on a boat in the sunshine right now, ready to turn that big ball game on tonight. Great job again by the defense. Again, I just cannot sing the praises enough. They've done phenomenal job, drive after drive after drive, holding them there to zero points. Offense, it's on you guys, let's go. Would you have believed at halftime when Indiana Wesleyan was up 14-0 in getting the ball to start the second half, that Lawrence Tech against the number five team in the country would have a chance to tie the game in the fourth quarter? About believe as, it, it's happening. It is happening about as much as I believe they'd only have 37 rushing yards all the way through the third quarter. Again, a testimony to that defense playing really, really well. Kolka. Wide open, Kendall Williams. If he keeps his feet, he may still be running. Oh, that's one you want. He was just a little off balance on that catch. Great ball. Really good play action pass out of that. Excellent first play to start this drive. First run of the drive, C.J. Davidson got away from one or two, but the rest of the guys came to get him. It's a loss of one on the play. So again, you see that C.J. earlier had great success on that run because he could just plant that right foot, get up the middle of the field on that one. Chop, chop, chop because he stopped his feet, rally the ball, short loss on that one. That said, that's in the books. Let's play the second down and get a play. Positive yards here to set up a manageable third down. Kolka, screen, Sanders, catch, flag behind the play on a big hit and tackle from Devin Backus. I think we got a holding on Lawrence Tech here. Do you take it or decline it? If it's a spot foul, which I believe it is in college, I would send them back. We'll see what they want. Especially with the way that Lawrence Tech has found its offensive groove here in the second half. Absolutely. Make them drive a longer drive. Jordan Langs, the head coach for Indiana Wesley, and indeed making the decision to back up Lawrence Tech. And it is from the line of scrimmage, so still going to set up a little bit longer than second down and 20. And again, they're riding their defensive strength and saying that's a good position for us to be in. So they make that call to take that penalty. Second down and a mile. Kolka stepping up, trying to throw, brought down. Ryan Wofford, the former Brother Ice Warrior with the tackle. 
excellent job closing that pocket as he started to escape up the middle. And Wofford just folded right in. Great job by him to fold in and make that sack for Wesleyan. There are just a few people associated with this broadcast and watching this broadcast. Happy to hear a Brother Rice shout out. Just, just a, few. a few. Just a few. Says the Catholic Central Shamrock calling the game. Well stated. Well stated, and I love that you give that up. Third down long. Kolka stepping, throwing, and incomplete. So it turned out taking that hold was a pretty wise decision. Absolutely. Still about a plus 10 on it. Plus 9. We had a short gain earlier. But them forcing the punt is what their plan was, too. Again, you talk about giving credit to the other team, and it's a very, very good team. And they did what they had to do there. Now, of course, what they're saying is chew up the clock, run the ball well, get this back down late into the fourth quarter before we give the ball up. Heading to punt. One of his better ones of the day. Carter Fields gets a block. Jacquez Carter down the sideline. Inside the 30, the best return of the day at the best possible time for Indiana Wesleyan. The guy you don't want to kick it to today. Nope. He has absolutely got a great feel, and it sounds like the past two weeks, as he had 10 receptions last week as well, he has found his offensive groove. And he is absolutely a weapon. So here you go. Indiana Wesleyan had a drive stall and end with a missed field goal a couple of minutes ago. Take two. This one drive starting just outside of the 25. Yeah, yeah somebody right moved there. <laughs> a couple uncharacteristic Call or uh, penalties right there by Wesleyan. Not an overly penalized team and let the play clock run down on a made field goal and the next attempt was wide right. And then they're starting off with a false start. Stokes swings it out. Carter in space. Got the block he needed. He's gone. And true to form, being very, very wise. Carter's having a heck of a day. Let's have him touch the ball and make good things happen. Again, great edge blocking. You see it every big play. Excellent job by the receivers just walling off, and Jacquez makes him right with the block. Touchdown, Wildcats. Good blocking out there. And Carter to the house again. What an afternoon for Jacquez Carter. Number eight in white and red, the guy from Naples. Scoring his second touchdown of the game. He's in double figure catches. And the rest of NAIA football needs to start paying attention to Carter who entered today with 29 catches on the season. He's had 23 combined now in the last two weeks. Had 150 yards prior to the two that he's had. He's having one heck of a day, and let's not forget the punt return that set up the Wildcats in great field position on the plus side of the 50. And then he finished it off, and is probably over there going, if you just keep giving me the ball, Coach, I'll make good things happen for our team. There is still so much time to go in this game. 2.36, all three timeouts for Lawrence Tech. Yes, that last touchdown was deflating, but it was not back-breaking. Absolutely. We need to put a drive together, put the ball in the end zone, and it's back to a one-score game. Our defense has shown quite amply they can stop them. Frank Black with the ball in his hands. Frank Black coming up the middle. Didn't make the 25. And there is a flag in the middle of the field. Kind of a weird spot to throw it. 
generally speaking, a block in the back or hold. We'll see. Oh, I see a targeting signal down there in this conversation. Maybe one of the Indiana Wesleyan kick coverage guys? Very possible. Yeah, some uncharacteristic errors made by the Wildcats here in the second half. They only have about 50 penalty yards per game on the season. They have easily equaled that amount here in the second half. And again, they're, they're timely. Uh, one erased a made field goal and, oh, it looks like it's going against LTU. Yeah, block in the back. So a team that has frankly struggled with bad starting field position all afternoon, struggling with it again. Got to go 85 yards to score a touchdown here. And they literally have got to go 85 yards. You've got to take this, uh, again, reward the defense, one, with some time off the field, and two, with an opportunity to come and make a difference out there in a one-score game. This game's not over yet. But this is a very important drive, to state the obvious. Call it crucial, for sure. Kalka play action. Looking downfield. Throwing downfield into double coverage. And the pass is incomplete with a flag. Terrell Cunningham, the intended target. Very interesting route. They had one receiver down the field and one, which was a fake to the running back, out in the flat. And that was it for going downfield to catch the pass. So not odd that there was a double coverage situation there. And we have a penalty on Lawrence Tech that looks like it's an offsetting situation. Yeah, legal man downfield on LTU and then that pass interference on Indiana Wesleyan. So we can re-rack it, do it again. Second, first down at 10. Unfortunate, because that would have been a big plus play for us. Kalka throwing. Stepping up. Now he'll tuck and run. Did get up to the 20 as Luke Bays made the tackle. Good positive gain of five. Set up second and five. You don't have to be in a hurry here. Maybe deliberate is a better word on this drive. Yeah, I was going to say the same exact thing. You're not in a rush to score fast. You just do need to score a touchdown. Um, in, in a relatively timing. Deliberate's a very, very good word for that. Pitch. Sanders. Tackled short of the first down. But it will be a very manageable third down, just about two. Ran right into his own receiver blocking unfortunately on that one. It was a good block on the edge. Just couldn't get inside of it all the way. But again, third down and one, you'll take it. Drive of the game right here for Lawrence Tech. They want to spring an upset. You need a touchdown. Pivotal third down. I like when they involve the tight end in lots of plays. He's a sure-handed receiver. A lot of trust with Tyler. Sack. Pressure got home. It's the second one of the day for Caleb Williams. Owen Perkins in there, too. The Michigan Connection's really coming through for Indiana, Indiana Wesleyan today. That's his second sack and forces us to punt. The Michigan connections all over the place with Indiana Wesley. And their head coach, Jordan Langs, is from Michigan, west side of the state. He went to Climax Scott's High School. Well, that would lead to some contacts, I'm sure. Yep. And hey, do you know a guy who knows a guy who knows a kid? And that's how that stuff happens. That is how the world works. Absolutely. I know a guy who knows a guy. Connectivity. Heading with the punt. Checks up again. Uh, the Lawrence Tech man continued to run forward, hoping that someone on Indiana Wesleyan touched the football. That didn't happen. It was you a know, good try. It's a, it's a little chillier today than it has been, and I am sure that affects the ball slightly. 
because we have just not had that solid punt game that he normally has. It's just not coming off his foot the same. And I'm just wondering, because during the week, we were pretty warm. Yeah. It was not too bad. And then Friday night, and now it's 50-ish. So I just wonder if that's affected what's going on out there. Daniel Weems, the running back with Stokes here. First down 10. They'll shift the tight end Charlie Hill from the left to the right. Now back to the left. Now you got Weems going to the right. Play action. Stokes, deep shot. Down the far side. That ball is caught. Markel Stevens peppers. Hello. I am telling you right now, Mr. Stokes could not have run the ball to him and placed it in a better spot because that was perfect. And him to have that, you love that name, Peppers. Oh, yeah. Excellent focus and concentration to pull that in. Another big play and sets them up on first and goal on the three-yard line. I'm going to keep saying Peppers, one, because he's having a heck of an afternoon, two. I'm having a late lunch as soon as this ball game ends. There you have it. Time out on the field. Indiana Wesley and electing to use their second of the three that they've got left. Frankly here, Richie, you're in a spot where 7.23 on the clock, you're up by two scores and back in the red zone. You never want to assume that a touchdown is the knockout blow. Touchdown here could be the knockout. You're, you're talking about icing a game, and, right. and you're absolutely right. And, uh, again, let's also look at the other side of the ball. If we get more than our average and give up slightly less than our average and they have a 31 scoring and 15 on defense giving up, you're going to do really well. I just like the fact that instead of just continuously running and just playing to finish the game they're working on something and that's a, a streak down the sideline let's work on it let's just say it was intercepted all right so Lawrence Tech has the ball in a three-yard line in a two-score game and our defense is great I like the fact that they're doing that because somewhere down the road it's going to come into play that they need that and they've worked on it in a game situation Xavier Gordon the Wildcat back here they've used the wide receiver in this spot earlier Ran for one touchdown earlier. Good Almost ran for right another there. one here. He's about a half yard shy of that goal line. Good job right there to come up, fill that oh, hole. Right. Hold him just short. You'd have to imagine Indiana Wesley and is in no particular hurry here. Seven minutes on the clock. Still 22 on the play clock. They'll use the tight end Hill as a fullback. Stokes being pushed by Hill. He didn't get in. Third down and goal. Oh my goodness, now they give him the touchdown. Initially they signaled that he was short, changed their mind. It's a touchdown for Stokes. He's in amidst the rugby scrum. For uh, Indiana Wesleyan touchdown that could prove to be the capper. And you see that more and more the old rule was you could not assist the runner. And now they literally just line up a big man behind the queue and keep shoving him in there. Somewhere not Reggie Bush smiles. Oh, absolutely. I think he smiles a lot. Yeah. He really does. Yeah, he's got a pretty decent life. Yeah. He, uh, Not too shabby. Had a frowning moment or two because of, you know, the taking away of that right. little trophy thing. But I'll tell you what, I, I think he lives a good life. He almost has a Wendy's Biggie Bag name after him, for crying out loud. That's true. That's true. <laughs> I am constantly bombarded by those commercials. Constantly. Well, they play them during games. Yes, they, they do. watch games because people eat Wendy's during games. By the way, it is a uh, very busy college sports Saturday. I got to check some of the other scores here. I know. I was, wa I was waiting for you to pull that up. Yeah, and I, I got is it. Is there an Ann Arbor game today? I think there was okay, a game. Okay, I was yeah. curious. I believe the coach, the head coach of one of those teams, was at your game. They yesterday. flew in in a helicopter. Wow. I thought I'd mention that. How about that? <laughs> Again. Uh, wow, Michigan pulling away from Penn State. They were down 17 to 16. It is now 41-17 Michigan with five minutes to go. 
Well, you talked about West, I mean, top-ranked team, obviously Michigan's top ranked. That's what you do. It's a game for a while, but when push comes to shove, we're the better team, darn it, we're going to take over. And uh, unfortunately, that's kind of what we're witnessing today. But again, kudos to the defense. Just got to have a lot of pride in what you did. No moral victories, but they played well today. Lawrence Tech going to have a chance to return this one. It's Frank Black from inside his five. Pushed out across the 20. After you finish watching our ball game, Lawrence Tech and Indiana Wesleyan, you got a bunch of great football games to flip over to. Alabama, Tennessee, that's three versus six. Oklahoma State, TCU, that's eight versus 13. And of course, our top story, NC State visiting undefeated Syracuse at the JMA Dome. Do you know anybody who was a Syracuse uh, Orangeman grad or anything? A couple of people, okay. yeah. Okay. A couple I of thought people. there was a special You know, they'll really just let anyone into that school. You know well, what that's I mean? a very good yeah. point. Actually, I think I got accepted. I don't oh, remember because I was doing State, but you know. How about that? <laughs> Which is proof that anybody can get right. in, by the way. Syracuse wins today. It'll be their best start in 35 years. Kalka with time over the middle and caught. Thompson's a big dude. You got to go low to bring him down, and that's what Justin Johnson just did. I like when he goes to the tight end. You just know they have a special chemistry. But I do got to have a question for you. Yes. I know in high school you couldn't wear an orange shirt. Yeah. I know that's the rule. Yeah. Unwritten, but a rule. Yeah. What about at Syracuse? Oh, all the time. That's what I'm talking about. All right, Richie, I'm about to reveal to you a secret, and we'll find out who's watching this broadcast and who will hold oh, it God, against me in later get years. Oh, you're going to aren't you? Yeah, we got a wide-open Lawrence Tech man at a first down. So I am a third-generation Catholic Central Shamrock. I was raised to not like the school that wears orange, Brother Rice. Yes. Secretly my whole life, I loved the color orange. And that's part of the reason why I wanted to go to Syracuse. I'll be darned. So you I can are going to get time. some phone buzzes. Yep. It's over, buddy. Hopefully Aaron Babbitts is not watching this game. Otherwise, I'm about to get a stern text. I actually may get a call. Yeah. Why are you bringing that up, Pop? Kalka behind Thompson. That's second now. Brother Ice and Catholic Central played their annual rivalry game here at Lawrence Tech a few weeks ago, about a month ago. Catholic Central won that game by two. It's one of the finer high school football games in Michigan so far this fall. Absolutely. It's almost playoff time in the high school ranks here in Michigan. One final week of the regular season next week, and then the playoffs start week after that. It's always a great time of year. Great college ball, great NFL, and great high school. That's a pretty darn good run for C.J. Davidson, and he draws a flag as Ryan Wofford couldn't help himself. Well out of bounds. Boy, I really like CJ on that one. He kept his feet moving, slightly going forward, bounced it outside, had a good run to begin with, a first down run of 10 yards, tack 15 on, plus 25 in the play. Regardless of what's going on in the game, you want the offense to have a real positive series here. Give the defense a chance again to shine and make a stop. Maybe get a turnover and turn something around. But again, positive to build on for next week. So Lawrence Tech's on the road the next couple of weeks. They're at Siena Heights next week, Concordia week after that, then St. Francis and Marion to close out the year. They don't flip the score line here. They'll fall to two and four with four games to go. And three extremely tough opponents right. of the four. Low snap. Kalka finds the ball, and he's got to eat this. Yeah, on paper, Lawrence Tech at Siena Heights next week. A ball game that Lawrence Tech you, you'd expect to be favored in. And then the final three weeks of the year, kind of like this week, frankly, a litmus test for your program. Score is what it is, but if you've been watching this game along with us all afternoon, you know that Lawrence Tech, frankly, the score right now doesn't reflect how close this game is. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So there's little plays here and there that have bit the Blue Devils in the backside. Kolka's throw got tipped, and he's thrown his fourth pick of the day. That's Mosier, his second pick of the day. But again, in a great position, just fell inside to make that interception. I'm not sure if Tyler didn't see him. 
or was expecting a different route to be run. Either way, Mosier makes another good falling to the ground. The other one, a phenomenal diving catch. This one falling to the ground and securing the ball. And again, you talk about what what what, what makes what is the anatomy, if you will, of, of a great football team and program? Making play after play after play after play. Talked to Coach Mitchell earlier about LTU and having an obsession with the little details six seconds at a time during a game instead of looking at the overwhelming whole picture sometimes. Daniel Weems has found little to no running room all afternoon and that time he's wrapped up for a loss. And again, you talked about earlier, how many times can the defense be put in a tough position, another turnover and come out. And they have stood the test every single time. One first down a lot today and that's part of it. And I do know that a 